Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Raven Maureen and this is the behind the scenes vlog of my Chanel inspired jacket. Now, if you've been subscribed and watching my videos for a little bit, then you know that I've been wanting to make this jacket for a while. And I was first inspired by this Celine jacket that Meghan Markle is wearing. And I think she wore this maybe like last year or a year or two ago or something like that. But either way, I was heavily inspired by this but I decided to make it my own. I added some different buttons to it. And I also decided to use McCall's 8370 for this look. Okay, Nala, I hear you, I see you. And so not only did I use this pattern, but I also extended the center front so I can get the buttons that I wanted. So sit back, grab a snack. You're in for a really good treat. I'll see you guys at the end. Bye. So the first day I surged all of the edges of my fabric. I bought this fabric from Mood. This is a tweed woven blend, I guess you could call it. And I'll link it down below for you guys. But this is black with like some speckles of silver in it, which I didn't mind and whatnot. But I'm surging it so that way when I pre-wash it, it doesn't snag and I don't have like a ton of string and thread and whatnot just in my washing machine so that's just a little trick that i do especially with fabric that is so loosely woven like this one it just i can already tell that it could be a problem in the washing machine After I got done with that, I put my fabric to the side and I started cutting out my pattern. So this is McCall's 8370 and I'm only sewing up the jacket for this one. But what I like about this pattern is that the jacket has cup sizes. So as you'll see on the front page, there's instructions for how to measure your cup size. I already knew I was gonna be a D cup, but I did measure myself just for due diligence and so basically there's only really one piece which is like the side front piece and that's pattern piece number two where that is a different size altogether based on your cup size so every other pattern piece in this envelope is the same like you'll use the same sleeve the same center front all those things it's just the side front that is gonna be different. So as you can see, I'm cutting out pattern piece number two, and so it'll be 2D to represent my cup size. And so I'm cutting out the size 18, which is supposed to give me a little bit of ease as well. Like it's 45 inches, I'm around 43 inches. So I gave myself a little extra room here. After I cut out all my pattern pieces, I decided to work on my front placket with pattern piece number one. So I got my dotted paper and I pinned my pattern piece to the dotted paper. And basically I trued up the pattern. I wanted it to be one and a half inches um, of extra placket or <laughs> I guess you could say I wanted to create an inch and a half of a placket and the center front of this jacket has like just a very very slight curve that you probably can't tell on the camera or on the screen but it's just ever so slight and so I wanted to true up the pattern to make sure that I would represent this curve in the placket.
Once I got done truing it up, I just traced around the original pattern piece and put it back in the envelope and I made the dotted paper my new pattern piece. Then I moved on to making a muslin um, and to be fair, I did not add any sleeves to this muslin. So it was honestly sleeveless because I just wanted to see how the center front would do. So I just cut out pattern piece number one, two, and then the back pattern pieces as well. And then I sewed it up very quickly. So I decided not to do the sleeves on the muslin and I literally just turned it under by about a half inch to represent like almost like a placket type finish. Um, but it fits good in the back, right? And then here you can see that there is an overlap and yeah. So I think that my placket situation actually works for this. I thought about extending it out further, but what I didn't want was to like create, I guess, more boxiness where there really doesn't need to be any more boxiness. So it does offer a nice shape on the sides here and then around the back as well. Um, honestly, I'm happy with it. So I am going to pre-wash this fabric. I. Um, did some wool light from Target and whatnot, and I'm gonna put this like on a gentle cycle. And as you saw, I've already searched the edges, so we're pretty much good to go on that. And once that's done, I will cut the pieces out. I need to figure out what I'm gonna do for lining. I could be kind of cheap and just use like one of the satins that I used on a project earlier, like the pink or the lavender, or I could get some new, um, some new lining fabric, but I don't know if I wanna do that yet. But Target is also right next door to Joann's, so we'll see. Anyway, all right, you guys, um, I'm happy with the fit. We're moving forward. So before I headed into work on Saturday, I cut all of my pattern pieces. I did actually end up going to the store to get new lining. So I'm using like that royal purple. And then I also decided that I was going to use some black interfacing to create more structure on this jacket. Not only did I find that this created more structure, by the way, I also found that it helped um, make the fabric appear darker, which I liked because with the loose weave, the opacity in the fabric wasn't as thick as I thought it would be. And so I actually liked that the dark interfacing really kind of made it more dark. Um, and then I also liked too, because with sewing this loose weave, um, you know, there were times that I had to unpick the seams and to be very honest with you, the interfacing of the backside helped tremendously with unpicking the seams. So on Sunday, I finally got the chance to sew and um, typically with any sort of outerwear piece, I always like to start with the lining. And for me, it's just kind of like a practice round. And once I know how to do the lining, then the outer pieces really become second nature at that point. The hardest part about this jacket, I would say, is the curvature around 
the pattern piece number one into the center front piece and then the side front piece just because the curve is so deep and I'm guessing that's also because it's a D cup that's trying to fit into that curvature and so I had to use extra pins and I also um, made little snips and notches to make the the fabric more pliable here Once I got done completely with my lining, I moved on to my outer pieces, which like I said earlier, it just becomes more natural. And so I started on the back side with the back piece and then the side back pieces as well, which are a little bit more narrow than the side front pieces.
So I would say hands down, the most challenging part of the jacket was the pocket. Um, I did use trim here and so I did a zigzag stitch on the trim and then I also followed the pattern instructions for the pocket as well. I did at first sew this down and then I realized just how crazy and wonky this looked. So I actually unpicked the entire pocket off and then I decided to hand sew baste it down if that's even how you say it. But I decided to hand sew it down first to just make sure that it kind of kept its shape and its place because it had shifted and then it just looked so cheap and really like weird on the on the front so i hand basted it down and then i took it to the sewing machine and i did a top stitch and then i unpicked those hand stitches that i did So one thing that I really want in this jacket is like a really structured shoulder. So I pretty much made some makeshift shoulder pads. You can do this with just having like scrap pieces of felt. And I kind of did like a really random measurement basically from like one side of my shoulder to the next. It ended up being about seven inches and then I did about maybe two and a half, three inches wide here. And what I did was I just basted it on the edge and um, that was pretty much it. And a little bit goes a long way. You can double this up, you could triple it up. I would say play with it before you actually sew it down into your jacket, but a little bit goes a long way, I promise you. So I'm in the final stages of making my jacket at this point. So I am attaching the lining to the outer pieces. I always start in the center back and work my way around the neckline like that and then all the way down to the center front. And then I typically will turn it to the other side so I can get to the other center front piece as well.
I think this is the first time I'm actually excited to sew on buttons. Um, so these are my leopard buttons and I'm using my heavy duty button thread, which I'm so excited about that I learned about at work. And so I've already threaded my needle and I've already measured these out and I've pretty much marked them with little chalk marks as far as where I want them to go. And so at this point, I'm just sewing them on and um, yeah, this is the home stretch. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Now, if you like this video and want to see more, definitely let me know in the comments and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And you can follow me on other platforms at Raven Maureen on Instagram, TikTok, and Threads. See you guys next time. Bye.